Welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name's Annie. You will have seen me in a previous video on the Supercar Club channel um, last week, picking up my new Exige 410. Uh, there she is, beautiful. So today I just wanted to give you a little walk around and a, and a little review on my first week and a bit with her. Let's go and have a look around. So the first thing I am sure you'll probably notice is this wing, which sits about the same height as the car. Um, so this car produces 150 kilos of downforce. What that means is it handles bloody well. It corners very, very well. So quick specs, actually. It's got 410 horsepower, um, 416 PS officially. Um, now, 410 horsepower doesn't sound like a lot by today's standards. Um, I had a McLaren 650S before this, which had obviously 650 horsepower. So this is 200, almost 250 horsepower down on that. And I can feel that in the straights. However, it weighs under 1100 kilos. So the brake horsepower per ton is something like 390 brake horsepower per ton, um, which is pretty bloody impressive, to be honest. And if I'm completely honest, on the twisties and out with the supercar club, you don't notice it. Um, you only notice it on the straights, but in the twisties, you know, <laughs> it definitely, definitely holds its own. So this particular car has a hell of a lot of carbon fiber. So, um, Carbon fiber there, that bonnet, hopefully you can see this. Carbon fiber splitter, should be like that. <laughs> Bloke who does the carbon fiber. <laughs> carbon fiber boot lid. I don't think you can see this very good in the video, but um, yeah, that's carbon fiber. The wing is carbon fiber. There is a fair amount of carbon fiber in this car, to be fair. I'm running Michelin PS5s on the back and PS4s on the front. Now it does come with Cup 2 Rs. Um, but to be honest, I prefer these tyres in winter, um, which it is currently. So, yeah, it handles all right. I, I managed to tra brake traction a little bit earlier, but um, not too much, too much of a big deal. Lovely big exhaust, which sounds incredible. And actually, I'll put a video of the day I picked it up um, of me revving it. And then also later in the video, you'll, you'll get to hear a bit more of that. OK, so let's have a quick look around getting the boot for a start so the button's there if anyone's bought one and can't work out where it is because i had that problem I had to ring lotus and ask them where the boot latch was um right so boot pretty good size you can probably fit a like a, a reasonably sized travel bag definitely not a suitcase but again it's a lotus um engine's got 3.5 liter v6 um supercharged Mid-engine, as you can see, um, I prefer mid-engine cars, to be honest, to front-engine cars. Um, pretty much every car I've had since my first Elise was mid-engine, because uh, I do like my Lotuses, and obviously the McLaren was mid-engine as well, so had to go back to mid-engine. Um, right, I'm just going to come off and put the thing up, because it keeps doing this. One second. Sorted. You have to give it a little slam to shut it. Um, Right, interior-wise, it's pretty basic, to be honest. Um, uh, my S2 was pretty much exactly the same. The only difference I've got, really, are these really, really, really nice seats. I love these seats. They're so comfortable. Um, now, think one thing to bear in mind if you're buying a Lotus is, number one, if you're tall, which I don't have this problem, I'm definitely vertically challenged, um, you have to get through that gap to get in it. It's not as easy as it looks, and it's not as big as it looks either. Um, and then getting out of it is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is wonderful. Do you want help? <laughs> sure. Ow! There we go. I'm out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's 
a lotus, you know that's what they're like, okay? You don't buy a lotus thinking, you don't buy a lotus thinking you're just going to get in and out of it without any drama. There's a neck to it. I think I've got the neck now, so um, it's not too bad. I'm just going to turn the exhaust off so that you can actually hear me. Um, yeah, there is an act to it. The other thing is the power steering at low speed. So there's, there's literally no power steering in this car, which at low speed is a pain in the ass to manoeuvre. Again, once you start hooning, you don't need that power steering. Um, and you don't even feel it. I've had three Lotuses now, so this is my third. I had an Elise um, 150 horsepower one and a uh, Evora 400 before. And then I upgraded to the McLaren, and the, the brief on the McLaren was it needs to be a big boy Lotus. Um, and that's exactly what I got, to be fair. It's, you know, it's fun to drive, um, quite raw, blah, blah, blah. However, it did have a lot of creature comforts in it. And coming back into a Lotus, I really noticed that. Um, so, yeah, as I say, the power steering thing is a bit of a pain at slow speeds, but generally you don't want to be driving it at slow speeds because you want to be driving it at the speed limit at all times, yeah? <laughs> no faster than that. <laughs> the other thing I don't like is that I am vertically challenged, but only 4 foot 11, and when I go to start the car, I have to sort of lean forward to get the clutch. Um, it's almost like a, I've got to lay down in the car to get to the clutch. So, that's fun. All of that said, oh, and plus, um, if you can't come in the car with someone you don't like, all of that said, what the car actually does makes up for all of that. So, okay, so, compared to McLaren, again, I've touched on it a little bit earlier in the video, um, but it is, as I say, the power is down, um, but the McLaren was very, very fast on the road, I found. This is a lot more usable, I'm more happy to thrash it and not feel like I'm going to lose my licence. Um, there were a couple of times with McLaren, you know, you'd be doing silly speeds and you wouldn't even know you were doing it. Um, whereas this, yeah, it's, you know, and you've got this tiny little steering wheel and you're low in the seat and you really, really feel connected to the car, so you kind of know everything that's going on. Um, the McLaren, the one thing I did miss was heel and towing, uh, which I have been doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back in a manual. Um, I forgot actually how lotusy Lotus is. It's, it's one of those things you don't understand until you drive one. And I've said this to people all along. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those things you really don't understand until you've driven one. Certainly in anger, um, you, can, you know, you can tell when you first get in the car, but. It's when you actually drive it and you feel the suspension and you feel how the car's behaving, the feedback to the steering wheel and, you know, the clicky gearbox. So the, the XZ410 um, has got an exposed, exposed gear linkage um, so you can see what's happening when you're changing gear. But yeah, it's, it's you know, everything is kind of, it's weight saving, it's light, there's no creature comfort. Um, it's just you and the car. Now the McLaren, I was more than happy to daily and I did. Um, I did a lot of miles in that car over the nearly two years I owned it. This, I'm not going to want a daily. Um, I'm, I'm, I got back, I've got an RS5 as well, I got back in my RS5 uh, a couple of days ago and was literally like, holy shit, the, uh, the comfort is insane. However, it feels like a boat when you've been driving this, whereas in the McLaren it wasn't quite such a difference. Whereas once you've gone from this back into um, back into the RS5, it's literally like turn away, if you know what I mean. Um, but, you know, I bought that car as a, as a sense of luxury and a nice thing that I actually want to be in every day. So, it does its job. Enough about what I don't like. What I do like is... Let's demonstrate the first thing. I'm just going to open the window. Open the exhaust. So I'm take my mic off. Stick it out the window.
never. I always said, my Aurora, so I, I firmly believe, and I will fight anyone to death for this, I firmly believe that Lotus have absolutely nailed the V6 noise, like, over basically any other car I can think of. I mean, F-Type, sorry, Lotus absolutely trampled it, you know, um, people quite often say the F-Type is the best sounding V6 on the road. Nah. <laughs> Lotus, Lotus have done it, in my opinion. Um, the, you know, the RS5 sounds nice, but it ain't this. Um, this, yeah, this is just, uh, I'll never get bored of hearing that noise, ever, 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 ever. Being a pain in the ass and being a lotus. 